Hey, what's up everyone? If you like the Mirror Masa gift tutorial, today we're gonna be learning an alternative way how to get a similar effect, but through video. And to help us with this tutorial, I have my brother Just Cruise It, who also showed me how to get the Mirror Masa gift effect, show us how to get a similar 3D effect, but through video. So let's cut to him and get this tutorial started. I'm Edwin, and this is a 3D effect. So the 3D effect is very similar to the Muramasa stereoscopic effect in terms of camera movement and body placement. The biggest difference is that the Muramasa effect is made up of two or more pictures where it skips frames in between. Whereas the 3D effect captures all the frames in between and it gives it one fluid movement. So to get this shot, you're going to need a gimbal slash stabilizer. I like to use my DJI Ronin S, but sometimes I do use my Glidecam HD 2000. Now let's go on to camera settings. For your camera settings, you want to shoot at a high frame rate, so at 60 frames per second or higher. So that means your shutter speed has to be at 1 25th of a second, or you could bump it up. So the reason we shoot it at 60 frames per second is because we're going to slow it down in post. This is what gives it that frozen picture look. You're going to have to turn on your rule of thirds, that way you have a guide to follow and it keeps you on the same plane for the height. It also helps you center the subject from start to finish. So the technique for the mirror masa effect is very similar because you want a nice wide base and you want to bend your knees. And when you lean from side to side, it makes it a little bit smoother and you get to stay on the same plane for the height. What I like to do is when I'm shooting it, I go two times in one try. So let's say I start left and I go right, then I'll go from right back to left. That way, in case I miss it on the first round, I got it on the second one. It's also really important to keep a consistent speed because if you start slow and then go fast, it kind of gives it a whip effect and it looks like it's bouncing off a wall. All right, once you're done shooting this bad boy, go ahead and open up Premiere, import all your footage, and we're gonna go through it. So try to look for the clip that you have that's the smoothest and it stays on the same level plane. So as you can see, I don't always shoot it as steady as possible, but that's why I shoot it three times so I can get the shot. Um, the second time I shot it was a lot smoother and you can see on my in and out points that I already picked So this is my smoothest video. I think it might not look like it right now, but once we um, Warp stabilize it and slow it down. It looks a lot better All right now once you pick your in and out points go ahead and drag Just the video onto the timeline and it matches all your settings depending on how you shot it in camera Now the first thing I do is go to effects and add the warp stabilizer. I usually keep this at 50%, which is a default setting. But if you notice that your footage moves a lot, then you can switch it to 70 or 80%. Now, the next thing I have to do is put it in slow motion, but I can't do that until I nest the clip. So click on nest. And what nesting does is it makes it its own individual clip with the settings it already has, or the effects it already has. And then click OK. Once that's done, right click it, go to speed and duration, and I like to keep it within 60 to 70% depending on how I shot it. By that I mean if I shot this pretty fast, like at a fast speed, and I try to slow it down in post, it kind of looks choppy. But if I shot it a little bit slower, then putting it at 50% looks a lot smoother. So I'm gonna put this at 60%. And let's see how this looks. I think it looks really good. Now the next thing you want to do is copy that clip and then paste it. So for Mac, Command C and then Command V. If you're PC, it's Control C and then Control V. And then go ahead and right click this. Go to speed and duration and reverse the speed. So this is how you make it loop. Select both clips, copy them and paste them. And then you can make this clip as long as you want. And that's all there is to it. All you have to do is export it, which is file, export, media. And I usually keep this at match source, high bitrate, and then choose your output location. The only thing I change is render at maximum depth. This gives me the highest quality export. Then you hit export and you're all done. And this is the final product.
I hope you guys found today's tutorial helpful and if you guys did make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Also, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop those down below or direct message my brother on Instagram and he'll make sure to reply. If you guys have not subscribed yet, feel free to subscribe and I hope to catch you guys on the next one. Alright, peace.